Hey everyone, thanks again for joining us on another week on your BC Boom channel. This week, we are just taking the Word of God and we're diving into it so it can be applied to our lives a little bit better. Now, we all know the term of, or the phrase, uh, staying in your lane, right? Typically, we, we say that when someone is not minding their business or they're getting into yours. Basically, they're crossing a boundary. They have stepped over or they've become out of pocket, as we also say. Now, boundaries are good things. Sometimes it helps us protect us literally like when we're driving and staying in our lane. A lot of times people think of boundaries as a bad thing, as like they're trying to be restricted from things or you just don't want to be, them to have fun. But no, boundaries are a good thing. Not only are they a good thing to help you say, stay safe physically, they also protect you mentally, but especially they help you spiritually. Keeping those boundaries and honoring what God has given us. It helps us find those ways that we can stay safe spiritually in God and also to continue to follow his word. Let's take more of a deeper look with our ministry partners. Hey, my name is Shane, and this is week four of our series, This Is Our Sex Talk. And before we get into that topic, uh, let me tell you a story really quick. So I grew up in Arizona, which means that in my early 20s, I would spend some time driving to California. It was the best place to vacation. Well, on the way from Phoenix to LA, there were some mountain ranges, but these were like serious mountain ranges. And they, they were the kind that, you know, if you looked over the edge of the cliff, it was 100 feet down. And what always stood out to me is that the only thing between my moving vehicle and 100 feet below was this little tiny boundary. I mean, it was metal, but I always wondered, like, would that do the job? Like, is that really there to protect me? I don't know. Sometimes it felt like it could have been different. It could have been bigger. It could have been made of something else. But what I did know is that at the end of the day, that boundary was there to keep me safe. What does it have to do with what we've been talking about in this series? Well, it kind of has everything to do with it. As we close out the conversation about sex and sexual integrity, there's more to it than we all may think. What's true of driving is actually true of sex. See, boundaries are a good thing. Just think about traffic. And here in the United States specifically, it's a certain way. I mean, can you imagine if streets had no lines, no markings, no space dividing your lane from mine, no signage to say whose turn it is to fly through an intersection? That would feel unsafe. Well, it's the same way with sex. Established boundaries are important. And while we probably all agree that having boundaries is a good thing, none of us like being told no. Even if we're being told no by ourselves, we just don't like it. The problem is that anytime there's a boundary, we feel like it's limiting our freedom. And freedom is a great thing that all of us want more of. Okay, I'll give you kind of a ridiculous example. Let's say that you got some money for your birthday, and let's say that your parent says that you shouldn't spend it all this upcoming weekend. I mean, you'd think, wait, what? That's wild, I'm 16 years old. I should be able to decide how I spend my own money. I mean, you wouldn't like that, right? But now think about this. What if you, in an effort to save up for something like maybe new shoes, you decided to show some restraint and self-control with that birthday money? What if you decided to limit yourself? Then you remember the last time you tried to save for those shoes, but spend it all on fast food after school. So you think, okay, I can do this this one time. I'm not gonna spend more than $5 this weekend. After a while, you wouldn't like that either, would you? I mean, even if you're the one who came up with that boundary, you still wanna push against it. We like having space and freedom, and we don't like being told that what we can and, and cannot do. In some ways, the same is true when it comes to sex. From the start of this series, some of us may have immediately rolled our eyes and thought, okay, here we go. Now we're just gonna hear, don't have sex for the next like four weeks or something. And you dreaded it, right? This could be true of people who've been sexually active and people who have it. Sometimes, even if we're being told no and we agree, 
we still don't like it. Now, on the other hand, none of us like the way that it feels if our boundaries are crossed or pressured. If you've been asked to send a picture that you didn't want to send, or you were guilted into going further physically than you wanted to go, then you know the feeling that can come along with that. Whether or not you agreed to do it, you still didn't like the way it made you feel. In the same way, if you've ever been in the heat of the moment and placed pressure on someone else to do something, then once you came to your senses, you probably didn't like the way you felt about yourself. So while we don't like being told what to do, we also don't like the way it feels when lines are crossed or pushed. But what if limits and boundaries were never meant to be a bad thing? And what if they actually freed us up to make empowered decisions for ourselves? We're gonna bring this series full circle by going back to the garden. And what I mean by that is actually back to the beginning, like when God created all of this and, and set it all in motion. But before we do that, I want us to quickly look at another passage that we've talked about in this series. It's something that this guy named Paul, he's arguably the most influential Christian ever to live outside of Jesus, he, he wrote in a letter to these people in an ancient city called Corinth. This is what he wrote. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Okay, so here's the thing. We are sexual beings, and that means that it's okay to have sexual desire, be physically attracted to someone else, and to be curious about sex. Sex is powerful, and it's good. And because it's powerful and good, we're instructed to flee or run from sexual immorality and instead run toward sexual integrity. Paul's telling us that when we're about to cross boundary lines, we should go the other way. Okay, but what is a boundary? Well, the definition in the dictionary is simply this. It's something that indicates or fixes a limit or extent. Think about boundaries this way. A boundary, it keeps something out or maybe it keeps something in. It doesn't have gaps or loopholes in it. And it can be seen from far away, whether you're inside or outside of that boundary. Now, some of you may be thinking, of course, this is when you tell us all of the things that we can't or shouldn't do. You're gonna tell us how sex is bad and we shouldn't do it. Look, if you feel that way, I, I get it. I mean, that's how I felt in high school, for sure. Even the conversations about sex, they kind of all felt shameful. It wasn't until years later that I actually realized that God's intention for sex wasn't for it to be shameful. See, when you go back to the garden where God created Adam and Eve, we actually read this in the story. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Okay, why is this verse even included in the Bible? It's so that we can see God's intention for people to be free, for Adam and Eve to be intimate with each other and feel no shame, for them to be completely known without feeling dirty or bad about it. Were they sexual beings? Yes, of course. I mean, God kind of told them to make babies, and this was simply the perfect world that God had created for them. Now, you may be thinking, okay, that sounds good to me. Sign me up for that. Like, they were free, which means they had zero boundaries. No, no, no. I said they had no shame, but they still had boundaries. In fact, if you move forward a chapter, you read this first. Check out what Adam said back to God. He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Okay, wait, what happened? First, they're naked and they felt no shame, and now they're hiding because they're scared and naked. What happened in between these two verses is that Adam and Eve crossed the boundaries that God had set up for them. Once the boundary was gone, that's when they felt fearful and ashamed. Adam and Eve saw boundaries from the beginning. There was a boundary separating sky and earth, light and dark, and sea and land. Humans were placed within the garden. That was their boundary. There was a certain tree that they couldn't eat from. Again, another boundary. There was a place for everything and every boundary that God created was for Adam and Eve's good because boundaries are good and boundaries are powerful. We see this all around us, don't we? I mean, think about it for a second. People who set boundaries for their money are typically in better financial shape than people who simply buy whatever they want. And people who have boundaries around their physical health typically feel better than people who don't. People who have boundaries around the way that they talk to people typically offend fewer people. It's the same in our sexual lives. When we decide that our boundary will be to live with sexual integrity and we honor that boundary and the boundaries of others, we actually begin to experience the type of life and sexual integrity that God designed us to. Now, as we wrap up this week in this series, 
please remember just two things. These are two habits for you to put into practice because they'll be good for you. I, I promise they will move you toward more of the abundant, full life that God has for you. First, honor your boundaries. Start looking for healthy ways to implement boundaries in all kinds of areas of your life, not, not just in your sexual life. What could that look like? Here are a few ideas. You could practice saying no. If you can practice saying no to small things like watching a movie that you don't want to see or hanging out with people that you don't want to hang out with or, or scrolling all night, even if you kind of want to, if you say no to those things, it'll help you feel more comfortable saying no when the stakes are higher. You'll become more confident at using your voice to express what's not okay with you. And then you can decide how you want to be treated. Determine right now what honor looks like to you. Set the standard for what's okay and what's not when it comes to how other people treat you. Then tell someone you trust, someone who can look out for you and make sure you're getting the honor that you deserve. Pre-deciding will help you stick to your standard and help you recognize when you're not being honored. And then for some of us, maybe, maybe we wanna say something. I mean, here's what I mean. It's possible that some of you have asked to be honored and then you didn't give your consent, which is just another word for permission, but your voice in that wasn't respected. And because of that, you're dealing with things like guilt, shame, anger, and secrecy. And that's a lot. And I'm so, so sorry. Please don't confuse your feelings of wrong with feelings of guilt. No one should ever feel guilty for something that someone else did to them. What was done to you wasn't honoring but you need to know that you still deserve to be honored. You should still expect honor. And one of the best ways that you can expect honor is to say something and share what has happened to you with someone that you love and trust. Someone who wants to honor you by helping you through this experience in your past. Okay, next, honor their boundaries. Be the kind of person who knows how to respect other people. Ask yourself, am I doing what's best for the other person despite what I want from them? Look at your choices, words, and behaviors. Then look at your relationships. Do you show honor in all of them? Understand that consent, permission, is the first step towards respect. Consent is definitely important, and it's a huge part of honoring other people, but don't view your relationships, behaviors, and choices just through the lens of what the other person said yes or didn't say no to. Instead, look at it through the lens of what's honoring, what's best for them, then, Accept the no. Sometimes one of the easiest ways to honor others is to simply listen to their no. When someone tells you no, they mean it. So honor them by stopping right then and there. Then, sometimes you need to pay attention to the no that you feel in your conscience. Even when you wanna say yes, even when the other person is saying yes or isn't saying no. All of those are steps that we can take to establish and respect our boundaries and the boundaries of other people. See, from the beginning, God's intention for sex wasn't for it to feel shameful. He wanted people to experience freedom and intimacy, which is just being close and being fully known by one another. He wanted it to be good. And part of what made it good was boundaries. So what if we actually experienced more of what God intended by practicing these boundaries in our own lives? Imagine if it led to more freedom and less shame. This is what God wants for us, and this is what God will help us do. Boundaries are good, and boundaries are powerful. And that, my friends, is the end of this sex talk. I'm so glad we were able to take a deeper look into what those boundaries that God has set for us are really there for. They're not there for us to feel shame. They're not there for us to feel down upon ourselves. They're there to protect us. So we cannot just protect ourselves mentally and our bodies, but to keep that temple that God lives in and honor it and let it be that true sacrifice that he has for us. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for everyone that is joining us, wanted to take a deeper look into how your word can be applied into their lives, God. Right now, keep them, God. Keep their hearts, keep their minds, allow them to set those boundaries that they need and allow them to stay to those boundaries. Don't let them test the boundaries because sometimes those boundaries can be tested and we can really 
really stray away from what we want in you, God. Right now, protect us. Keep us and keep your angels around about us, God, until we meet again next week. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you back here at your VC Boom channel. Bye.